I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi. Since we first reported our experiences on atraumatic dental implant removal using the reverse torque technique in 2014, we have helped hundreds of patients get their ailing or failing dental implants removed with this remarkably non-invasive technique without any cutting or removal of bone or surrounding tissues as it used to be required in older techniques. Most dental implants were removed because of bone loss related to peri-implantitis and effects of inflammation and infection around the implants. While others were removed due to poorly positioned implants that were not restorable or had led to significant amount of gum recession and bone loss with undesirable aesthetic outcomes. And in a few patients, the implants were removed due to atypical health-related problems with signs and symptoms that could not be related to any other factors. And in two patients, their implants were removed following a positive hypersensitivity test to nickel and presumed reaction to trace amounts of it in their implants. So we have received many inquiries and questions on these treatments as patients with such problems look for a better way to have their ailing or failing dental implants removed. Here are the top five questions and answers. Question number one, does reverse torque technique work on dental implants that were placed years ago and are completely integrated and healed. Initially, it was believed that only newly placed dental implants with partial healing can be removed with the reverse torque technique. It turns out that is not the case. We have had successful reverse torque removal of many dental implants that were placed years ago and have completely healed and integrated into the bone. These include implants in both the upper jawbone as well as the lower jawbone. The only exception may be larger diameter implants in the lower jawbone in patients with very dense bone, what we refer to as D1 bone. In such cases, a modified technique may be necessary, which involves uh, removal of a slight amount of bone at the superficial aspect of the implant at the top of the ridge and then using the reverse torque technique to back out the implant. Question number two, is the procedure painful? The removal of dental implant with reverse torque technique is absolutely pain-free. It can be done under local anesthesia or IV sedation for those who want to be a little bit more comfortable. For patients who are awake with local anesthesia, there is only a sense of pressure during the reverse torque, but no pain at all. And because the procedure is completely non-invasive, there is no or minimal pain afterward. Most patients take some Advil or Tylenol for two or three days as needed. There is also no swelling and minimal risk of infection, all thanks to the non-invasive nature of this great technique. Question number three, does the technique work on all implant types? The answer is yes. The technique works virtually on all dental implant types, minus two exceptions. It works quite predictably for all threaded screw type titanium implants. But there are two types of implants that cannot be removed using reverse torque technique. The first is Bicon implants, which is basically a press fit dental implant with an abutment that is tapped in. This abutment is essentially cold welded in place and typically cannot be removed very easily. Hence, it blocks access to the implant body itself and the reverse torque tool cannot be engaged. The second type of implant in which reverse torque technique may not work are the ceramic dental implants, which may crack or break under such uh, forces. For both Bicon and ceramic implants, we recommend using a piezo technique, using fine tips to remove minimal amount of bone necessary to dislodge the implant out. Question number four, do I need bone grafting after dental implant removal? 
The site of the implant removal essentially heals like an extraction socket. So ordinarily, no bone grafting is necessary. The only time a bone graft may be recommended is when there's advanced bone loss around the implants, whether due to peri-implantitis from effects of the infection or inflammation, or from implants that were placed at extreme angles with loss of bone and soft tissue. And also in situations where the removed implant is in close proximity or near the maxillary sinus and a perforation is anticipated. In such cases, a bone graft may be done either at the time or later to restore the missing bone. Question number five. Am I a candidate for another implant since the first one failed? Dental implants can fail for a number of different reasons, most of which are completely preventable with proper diagnosis, proper planning, and following proper execution of the treatment itself. We have described these in our ebook, The Painful Dental Implant, which is available for free download on our website. We have retreated many patients with failed dental implants with complete success following the proper protocol and our digital workflow. So the answer is absolutely yes. One can have a successful replacement of a dental implant that was failed previously. But this requires an attention to five factors. First, we need to have adequate bone presence. Second, we need to have thick and abundant gum tissue surrounding the implant. Third, the implants must be placed absolutely perfectly and with precision, with sufficient bone all around. Fourth, the implants require restorations with ideal contour and fit. And finally, a proper home care hygiene protocol as well as professional maintenance. So if you're considering implant removal and would like to learn more about our unique approach, uh, contact us for either an online or an on-site consultation. And if you live outside of the Washington DC area where our offices are, ask about our scheduling assistance for our out-of-town patients. Thank you.